Hi again, everybody. I just wanted today to talk to you about something um, that I think is is really fundamental in anything that you do in life. Now, I did talk about this. I believe I touched upon it in the video about how to get ahead, how to achieve, how to be successful in life with my four P's of purpose, passion, and perseverance equals progress. Um, I'm going to focus on that perseverance word in a slightly different uh, way. So one of the, the biggest misnomers that goes on in our society is all about, and there's another video coming about this, but terminology, um, particularly in the business world, the lot, the jargon, the lingo, whatever you want to call it, um, it's very damaging for the connotations of the word and vocabulary and language is super important if you want to understand why that is someone far more uh, intelligent and an expert in that area would be john evans i did a, a too many cooks episode with him on expressionist writing he talks about why and how language is so important in shaping our uh, our brain and how we see and feel the world now Come back to this perseverance piece. In order to create something that is really successful, you have to be able to consistently um, come to the table, the desk, your office. Um, you know, they call it a step up to the plate in, in I think it's a baseball term, or if you golf, consistently be in that first tee, um, et cetera, et cetera. And the reason that's so important is because that's the only way progress really happens. You've got to keep iterating. You've got to keep progressing. You've got to keep um, delivering. But people have this perception with the world we're in now, the Instagram world, the instantaneous world where you want to buy something, you buy it next day or next hour if it's Amazon, whatever it is, that item's at your door. You want to talk to friends, phone call, FaceTime, Zoom. It's all very, very instant. What we forget, though, is the parts of life that are the most rewarding are things that aren't instant, the things that actually take a long period of time. Uh, an old director of mine over at Tesco, for those that don't know, Tesco is the UK's largest private sector employer, and it is the second largest retail in the world, or certainly was when I was there, um, by a number of different metrics, just behind, well, behind Walmart by the way, but it's, it's still number two. And he said, said something very profound at the time, took some years for to think about this, he said, be like a candle, not a firework. That's exactly what I've just been discussing. A firework, if you think about it, is slap bang, amazing, brilliant, few seconds, fades out to nothing. Whereas a candle, for as utility, is useful, whether it's warmth or light or all different manner of things, for a long extended period of time, and it is consistently around for a long extended period of time. It's not like a firework, which is very here for a second, great, and then gone. So in, in the working world, there's no good producing a little bit of good work once, then nothing at all. Far better to do consistently great work. And the only way to do consistently great work is you'll hear from Steve Jobs, you'll hear from all of the the, the greatest innovators in any field is to truly love what you do. And that goes back to my four Ps and the video about success, which you can find on the uh, Burning Issues playlist on my YouTube show, should you wish to. And so I want to show you a couple of different diagrams that actually explain what I'm referring to and um, in, 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 in quite interesting to look at. So... The first one to look at is what's called the flow concept. Now, 
the flow concepts, I think we're showing the wrong one, hold on. Let's just find the right one. Uh, there we go. So the flow concept, this was actually something that um, I, I knew about, but I came across again from a Joe Rogan video with a fellow called uh, Firaz Zahibi, who's a black belt in MMA and um, a world-renowned trainer in that field. He's talking about working out and how to work out smarter. And the fact that people think that when you work out, the next day you should feel really sore, and the next day you should feel sore. That's totally incorrect and totally wrong in his opinion. And it comes down to kind of what this graph is talking about and also about consistency, the intensity. Because let's take this for, for an idea. Say you can work, and I'll show you the maths as well for this. Say you can work out three days a week. You're working out really hard and you need the recovery time. So three days a week, as we see there. That means in a month, you're actually working 12 times a month, which then means a year, you're doing 144 workouts. So let's write that down. One, four, four, if you're doing three a week. Now, let's say you can do six a week because actually you're not exhausted after each session. You're putting in say 50 to 60, 70% effort, not 80, 90 plus percent effort. So you can actually recover much faster. So then the same, same numbers. Six by four is 24 sessions a month times by 12 is 288 sessions, right? So obviously that math is quite simple. If 288 be 144, but what's interesting is you're doing 144 additional sessions a year than the person is doing this intensity, intensity rather. And if you look at that over a longer period of time, say you're a child, um, athlete looking to go to the Olympics, you do this over a 10 year period, you'll do almost 1500 more workouts than the person who is doing this intensely. Now there's a time and a place for intensity, of course there is, but actually the key here is, is he was saying is consistency is key. And I've been trying this for about the last couple of weeks and I'll let you know how I actually get on with this. Now, how this relates to this flow chart is, all, is, is interesting because what he was saying is if the workout at the gym is far too simple, you'll just get bored of it and it's not interesting. If the workout is far too challenging, I don't think the word anxiety is correct in my opinion, but I think actually um, you will throw the towel in. If it's too difficult and every time you go, you can't make any progress, say it's golf and you're just terrible at it, uh, you can't make progress, you have a lesson, it's not for you you will throw the towel in. You've got to find this channel here, he called it the flow channel. This is the concept by Michali. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce that surname because that's yeah, not going to work. So um, you want to find a place where you're, it's difficult, it's challenging, um, but you actually are really enjoying it. So if you're not enjoying your gym workout, find something you enjoy, go cycling, go running, go swimming, go, do whatever. We're obviously in a time where the options are limited, but find something you enjoy. Don't just do something because you feel obligated to as a chore. It's no fun and it's not likely something that you're going to consistently do every day and you'll do it for a couple of months, lose a bit of weight or gain a bit of muscle or whatever your goal is, and then you'll just give up and done. That's, that's no good for anybody. The next, um, the next screen I want to share with you is... Um, about success. A friend of mine shared this, but also Tejla Vaughan has shared this as well. Um, a guy from Dragon's Den, which if you're not coming from the UK, it's the current of Shark Tank. It's a, a program where investors come on board and people pitch to them and then they try and do some deal. This is the crucial bit about the iceberg. And again, why consistency is so key? Because people are only seeing the little bit just above the surface. So for me with allergy, Allergies be on the app store now, I believe about four weeks. I've had great, great um, feedback from diners and restaurants and it's going very well. However, all this underneath the hard work, the persistence, the late nights, the rejections, the sacrifices, discipline, criticism, doubts, failure, risks, 
that all those things, if you're just working intensely, you're going to give up very quickly. You've got to be able to consistently get up every day, enjoy what you do, and put the best work possible. And you can only do that if you're loving what you do. That's the only way to do great work. It, it, it's, it's a known entity. There's no question about it. And so I'm hoping that this is, um, I've got across the message about consistency being intensity. Um, it's better in a working world, if you work yourself, for example, to do a few hours a day, seven days a week, in my personal opinion, than it is to do seven hours a day, be four days a week, and then within a month or two, you burn out and you can't stand your business anymore because you know, you're not enjoying it. Find a way, particularly in the world right now, where um, finding other things to grab your attention, to you know, spur your creativity, to uh, some release is quite challenging. You really, really uh, work really hard on figuring out how you can be consistent in application and in what you're doing. Um, the final thing I'll leave you with, and this is how I believe it fits in, how to be consistent as well, is all about self-awareness. And this is one of my favorite, favorite um, diagrams and um, models and explanations. So let's just see, let's get to the right page. There we go. So this is the emotional cycle of change. I learned this at Tesco when I was managing a team of 140 in in-store management. And this really is something that can happen intraday, intra-hour, intra-week, intra-month, into year. At any point, and people go through it at different rates. The awareness, the self-awareness of knowing this is going on will, will change your life. Quite simply, will change your life. So what happens is, let's take a new job, quite a simple one. You apply for the job, you get the call, stage one occurs, which is uninformed optimism. optimism. In other words, brilliant, I've got this new job, it's more money, it's this, it's that, it's an industry I want to work in, it's a company I work for, blah, blah, blah. Brilliant. I saw you thinking, you're not informed, you're just optimistic. And for, for being optimistic, nothing wrong with that. Then maybe a few days before, you're starting to get a bit nervous. What are my colleagues gonna be like? What's the new commute gonna be like? What's my laptop gonna be like? All these little things are niggling at you, niggle, 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 niggle. Then you get into the office first day and they start to explain to you after your induction what you'll be doing, who your colleagues are, and it gets overwhelming, it starts to become very difficult, and you start to slip into what's known as the valley of despair, where you're going, I just can't do this. The systems I don't like, the um, people are, are, I've got to make new relationships with, I don't need to speak about this, I feel totally out of my depth, et cetera, et cetera. Gradually, as time goes on, and normally this, this stays three to four in, in the working world is about six months, you start to get to a position where you're like, oh, you know what, I could, that task that I couldn't do, before, I can now do. And those people I didn't know how to speak to and who to speak with in the process, now I know. All of a sudden, you get a bit more confidence as time goes by. You become more informed about what you're doing and optimistic about what you're doing. And then a little bit further down the line, you get that success and fulfillment because actually you've achieved uh, a goal. What I would say, though, is the self-awareness here to know about this cycle and to know it's okay to have you know, dips and, and peaks and drops. And then one of my favorite things as well is talking about a control zone and then coming back to the consistency piece. I might do a whole video on this, but effectively the control zone is, this is the control zone. If you feel you're getting overexcited, giddy, happy, and you're going up here, but one of the levers and the escape valves you can pull or open to bring yourself back into your control zone. And similarly, if all of a sudden you are noting yourself going down, because of a negative experience, some feedback, criticism, or whatever, what can you do, activities, or meditation, or um, painting, or the gym, or whatever, to bring yourself back to the control zone? Because the control zone is the same as the flow state, it's the place where you'll do your best work, where you'll consistently deliver, and that is the key to being successful. It's that simple.